I wanted to ask this question because I've been I've been harping on this for years and I've said this publicly. I love The Fountainhead. It is in my top five, maybe my top three favorite books. It just connects with me so much. And I wanted to ask you guys, and, and you're going to balk at this question probably, but I wanted to ask you which is the better novel. And I'll give you my take. Fountainhead or Atlas Shrugged? Clearly, those are your two choices in terms of Ayn Rand. I think they're both great books, but I've argued in the past that Atlas Shrugged is designed, and I think Ayn Rand admitted as much, that it's designed to consciously and systematically flesh out her philosophy. And I've said this before, I've had discussions publicly with Mike over at Mike's Books and a few other booktubers, that there are like three or four characters in Atlas Shrugged that are very much, and I, guys, by the way, I love Atlas Shrugged. It is brilliant. It's a masterpiece. But as a novel versus a work of versus a work of philosophy, there are characters in Atlas Shrugged that feel a bit wooden and feel like mouthpieces for Ayn Rand's worldview. They speak like her. They espouse her ideas to the letter at times. Some of the characters in Atlas Shrugged just kind of feel wooden to me. Whereas The Fountainhead, I feel like it's different. It was written before Ayn Rand had fully concretized her philosophy. And so to me, it's better art. And I know you guys would disagree with that. That's why I brought you on. I, you should read Atlas Shrugged. It's amazing. It's going to change your life. I'm going to review it on this channel. But for me, it's less, the fountainhead is less rigid. It's less dogmatic. The story is more graceful. It's about individualism versus very hyper-specific nuances of her philosophy. Rourke is one of the great heroes of literature. And so I just wanted to ask you guys, how do they compare and contrast these two books? And do you agree with me? Probably not. Do they serve different purposes uh, and 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 that sort of thing. And what? How do you think they compare? Or is it impossible to say that? Should should we just look at them as serving different purposes, and they're each good in their own way? Start with you, your own. Well, I mean, I think they're both masterpieces. I I'm sympathetic to the idea that many people have that Fountainhead either resonates more with them. I can completely understand that, or that it it's it's even a the, the better novel. I, I'm not a literature expert. I'm not in a position to rank the best. Literature, you know, the the my favorite is Atlas Shrug, partially because I read it first, partially because it blew my mind, it changed my life. Um, it it and partially because I think the achievement in Atlas Shrug is is greater. Um Atlas Shrugged is a book that integrates an entire philosophy into a story, an entire world, uh from from uh you know a, a, a whole from the 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 political realm all the way to the aesthetic realm all the way down to the personal realm. Uh, you know, I, I consider Reardon and Dagny as fleshed out and as real personalities and people as as Rourke and, and Dominica. Um, and yet and she so she manages both to give us these personal heroes of, of immense integrity who change Reardon you know, changes through the novel. I mean, people talk about uh, wooden characters, but Reed is the opposite because, you know, he, he is really affected and changes and, and, and uh, has conflicts and, and has to resolve those conflicts through the novel. Uh, so to me, it's a greater novel. For me, certainly personally, it, it meant more, it means more. Um, but I certainly understand people who, who prefer The Fountainhead. It, it's, it's certainly a more personal uh, more intimate uh, novel. The Atlas Shrugged is about the world and about and about integrating a perspective of uh, of the world uh, in into the story. And I and yeah, and also I I don't mean to cheapen the book, but because of course, and I've listened to Don's podcast where he talks about this, so I don't mean to over allegorize it. But I uh, Atlas Shrugged is happening right now, and you can say that I'm sure. You can go through any like presidential administration. You could say, "This is we're living through Atlas Shrugged." But it it's is and Trump. it isn't because because Atlas Shrugged is not about the politics of it. It's not about it's about Reardon and Dagny and and and, and Francisco and ultimately about Galt. And so, what's happening around is the backdrop to illustrate something really really crucial and. Do we have Nagney's, Riddens, and Francisco's to some extent? Do we have John Galt? We don't. 
Um, it, it, so the, it's, 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 it's not happening around us. And indeed, if it was happening around us, I'd be a lot more optimistic about the future of the world. But should I not be noticing, Yaron? Should I not be noticing these strong parallels, the cronyism, the corruption, sure. the sure. collectivism, the sure. secondhanderism? The, it's all the, happening, but you could notice public intellectuals. in the world of architecture, you would notice all of that about the fountainhead. You'd say the fountainhead is happening right now. And it is. I mean, there's no question that they are innovative. Uh, brilliant architects out there who are being repressed and are being canceled, as you noted. Um, uh, and, and that is true in, in the arts more broadly, and it's true in, at, at Google. So I think the fountainhead's happening all around us. It's just a matter that it's happening in, a, in, a, you know, in one particular realm where Atlas Shrugged is so much broader. All right, Don, and then we'll, uh, you'll be the last uh, word on this here, Don, and then we'll close out. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I agree with you. On Atlas has always been my favorite as as literature, and uh, I don't think it's that she's trying to make a mouthpieces for her philosophy. It's that her theme is the role of the mind in human life, and to get the role of the human mind, you're seeing a like a whole bunch of variants and aspects of like the mind's role in life, and it's fundamental. So it's throughout you know human life. But I will say this about the Fountainhead that I think. Po- is one of the things I love about it that makes it so impressive. Um, th- think about uh, I, there's this YouTube series called like um, uh, pitch meeting. I forget exactly what it's called, but it's basically like a guy coming in and like pitching movies to, uh, to Hollywood, like real movies, but they sound insane once you're trying to make the pitch. Think about the pitch for the fountainhead. Okay. I'm going to write about a guy who's trying to um, get uh, become an architect. And uh, that's, that's the book. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's just a guy trying to like get a job you go like how is that that's not even a story like get out of a, my a, office a person you know it's i mean it's really just a guy living his life and yet it has this kind of heroic stature because it's part of the message is the noblest most heroic thing is not some kind of like you know caped crusader running through the streets it is a person truly dedicated to the pursuit of their happiness and the and living by the kind of virtues that make that possible and that kind of dedication and uncompromising integrity towards them. And to me, that's just an amazing achievement that you can take something that on the face of it is not is hardly even a story and make it a gripping page turner and one of the most inspiring books ever written. And really, I mean, it's Yaron mentioned it's more intimate. Part of what it is, is you really understand the people around you way more after you read The Fountainhead. And like you can look around and see, like, I really get what makes my sister tick and what makes my mother tick and like why my teachers treated me this way. It is it's the kind of book that growing up, everybody should read um, because it gives you that kind of illuminating look at like the kind of life I'm going to live. Like, I'm not going to invent a new motor and, you know, take down the world through some, um, well, I don't want to say anything more, but, I, you know, take on all of society. But I am going to f- try to build a career and a life that I love. And the Fountainhead speaks yeah. directly to yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, I want to say goodbye to you guys. And I want to say how much I appreciate your work. You're both brilliant. You're both heroes to me. You've inspired me. So thank Thank you for being on iWizard. I really appreciate you joining me. And I hope that when I review Atlas Shrugged, you guys will consider coming on again. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, be well. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brook Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Brook Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.